My name is Anna and I'm from Ukraine. From Ukraine. How many of you think about the meaning of the name of your country, the origin, when was it used for the first time? Well, I did not think about that myself, but Russians who constantly want to steal our history, our cultural heritage, made me do so. And today I am pretty aware of the history of the term Ukraine and hopefully its bright future. Old and widespread name for the ancient Kyiv state was Rus. Kyiv Rus was used to speak about large territories that were under control of Kyiv. Actually, this was one of the largest medieval countries. At the same time, in different written documents, we come across another name, Ukraine, Ukraina. The first time it was mentioned in Kyiv Chronicle, also known as Ipatiev Chronicle, was 1187, so a thousand years ago. As with all ancient names, sometimes it is difficult to find the first usage and the exact meaning of the term. And modern Ukrainian and not only Ukrainian scientists love quarreling about that. But we can say that at least two versions are believed to be the most trustworthy. Version number one says that Ukraina, Ukraine, means borderline, borderling territories, outpost. And another version means native land, my own region, inland. Then we meet the name Ukraine in various chronicles, documents, memoirs and letters for a very long period, until in 14th and 15th centuries it becomes extremely popular. It is connected to a very identified territory that is close to modern Ukraine borders and it is mentioned in various printed books and serious chronicles. It also appears on the maps, for example, on the 1613 year map of a Dutch researcher, which once again goes very much against the narrative that Russian so-called president dictator Putin likes to spread, that Ukraine did not exist. No, it existed long before Moscovia. Usage of term Ukraine reaches its peak during the times of Cossack state. They use it as a synonym to motherland, but also as a political term to denote the territory controlled by Cossacks. They were unique social military class with freedom and bravery, and they identified themselves as Ukrainians. Ukrainian hetman Bogdan Khmelnytsky also loved using the term in his letters and communication, equating Cossacks to Ukrainians. In the second part of the 17th century, term Ukraine becomes extremely popular in European cartography. For example, a world-famous traveler and war engineer, Guillaume de Beauplan, who traveled Ukraine, also drew the map of Ukraine and even printed a book entitled description of Ukraine in 1660. This map was actually very popular in books, in education and for many people centuries ago it was obvious that Ukraine is a different freedom-loving country. Despite partial occupation by Moscow Tsardom and later Russian Empire, the term Ukraine managed to survive until the end of the 18th century. It is only then with the destruction of Cossack state Zaporizhia siege by Catherine II in 1775, the term becomes prohibited. The next centuries are pretty dark for Ukrainian culture, history and language. Russians do everything they can to distort the history, to erase Ukraine from books and maps and to substitute it with a totally artificial concept created by lovers of Ruski Mir doctrine. They invent Malorossia, which can be translated as small Russia, and try to substitute it with the term 
on maps and everywhere and in the minds of the world. And to some extent they succeed because many people forget about long and successful history of Ukraine. Once again, I would like to stress that for more than a century, Russian Empire did everything to erase Ukrainian culture and historical memory. They were literally burning the books and forbidden Ukrainian names. And of course, they wanted Ukraine to be forgotten forever. But it did not happen and it will never happen like that. 19th century is marked as the century of national revival and many modern states appear. In that period term, Ukraine also returns back into conversations, books and intellectual debates. And it becomes popular once again. In 1918, we were even lucky to proclaim independence. Maybe not for a long period of time, but still that was a very meaningful and important moment in modern Ukrainian history. And the state that proclaimed its independence in 1918 was known as Ukrainian People's Republic. Later occupied by communist regime and being a part of Soviet Union, Ukraine was known as Ukrainian Soviet Republic. Once again, underlying that we are very different from Russians, even under occupation. And finally, in 1991, we have become Ukraine, a free and independent country with a very long and interesting and problematic, but at the same time, inspiring history. <laughs>